you, Dan. Um, good, good afternoon, everyone. So I run the Wiltshire Museum in Devizes, which is actually run by the Wiltshire Archaeological and Natural History Society, which is always a good test of how much I've had to drink. We have nationally important designated collections. We're one of about 60 museums in the country to have that, gov that badge from government. Uh, independent charity, and the key thing at the bottom is our substantial amount of funding from our local council. In other words, not much. 12,000 from Wiltshire Council, 4,000 from our town council, and we're paying back nearly £25,000 back to Wiltshire Council. So we're subsidising the council. Great fun. This is what we do. We run um, lectures, conferences, events, walks. Um, we have an education officer who goes out to schools. You can see 46 school visits and outreach sessions a year, 27 children's activities, 18 university and college groups, 33 postgraduate researchers and 56 groups. That's what we do each year. It's a bit scary. I'm afraid my story is one well, not a great success, except for this. This is a project showing what we can do. Um, we did a project in 2013 called Dig Devices. These are some Roman statuettes in the British Museum found in 1726 no, or something like that. They created a sensation because this was the first find in Britain where people suddenly realised the Romans were actually here. And people queued around the block in London to go and see them. These are now in the BA. They've not been back to devise in the cities. The question is, where do they come from? So we devised a project to look at the green space in town, which the general area where we thought they, would come from, they came from, to try and work out if there was a Roman city there, which we know there is somewhere. Um, this was being done by a group of our members. We have 1,000 members. We have a group called the Archaeology Field Group who go off and do survey work and dig holes. So this is them doing geophysics on the green. We then did small-scale set of test pits. This is the secondary teacher, uh, history teacher from the local secondary school, getting his hands dirty. Um, this is uh, another t test pit with, uh, le led by our session co-chair, learning how to do archaeology, I think, uh, along with his children. We had about a thousand people came to visit the two days of work we did. We had reenactors, Romans, that was fairly obvious, but also we got evidence of um, a, uh, there was a, 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 essentially a canteen there in the Second World War. We picked up evidence of that, hence the ARP war. And as you can see, loads of people came to visit. And more importantly, it's on Oasis, and the report is done to professional standards. Volunteer, amateur group with some, you know, some professionals who work in that, but done to professional standards. That's the key. That's when it works. This is perhaps slightly different. And no, I don't want to establish blame here. This is just how the system has not worked. I was invited to go and give a talk to a local parish, Bishop's Canning, which is about a mile from the outside of the Vises on World War II um, POW camp that was on the outskirts of town. Half the site of that has been trashed by later development, including a development that went up 10 years ago. Um, and very <coughs> excited to see that, they're, well, not excited from the right word, there's going to be a development extending that development towards this village. And so the community in Bishop's County, in the village, wanted to create a bridge between the part of their parish that was in Devizes with those people in the village, because there was a complete disconnect. And the people in those new developments were not connected to their local area, very much as we're thinking about Campbell. So, Wessex Archaeology did an evaluation, and um, I didn't hear much about it, but you know, that's, that's the way it works. And I just filmed in some slides from the end of the brick brown. Um, put in some trenches, geophysics, Roman villa, fantastic. Um, lot, you know, some nice finds, small scale, you know, obviously done very quietly because the developer didn't want anything to get in the way of the development. So we then go into the next stage. Knowing that, I then talked to various people, the landowner, the developer, the 
contracting archaeologists, the planning archaeologists about how we could do, and then the local community, about how we could do a community project before the next phase of archaeology was done. All discussed, all I thought agreed. So we'd work with the archaeological contractor, they'd do the stuff they're being paid for properly, then we'd do the community work with our field group, we'd do some test fittings, whole scale sections of ditches that wouldn't be done otherwise, all that sort of thing. Work with residents of the housing estate right next door, and then generate, we had some targets, the prison of war camp, there were some, definitely some finds there, and some things like field ditches. And the other thing I wanted to do was, this is the conventional way we write up archaeological sites. This is the journal we produce. We've been producing since 1853. Very exciting. About 20 sites in there. And it makes a nice thud when it hits the table. <laughs> Wouldn't it be rather better to have something nice and simple? This is model from Manchester, which Dan pointed at me. Yeah, so it's all your fault. Sorry. But perhaps slightly slimmer. But uh, something for those people moving into the houses, as they're moving, telling them what's under their house. And then perhaps, as with a local museum, we could have a little display about the site. Creating a link between the people moving into the houses and the local community. The museum is featured in the local, in the estate agent's brochures, because we have such a fantastic museum at Wiltshire, as you probably know, is full of <coughs> Archaeology. Brilliant. Did we need much warning? I said two weeks notice and we can probably get this up and running. Guess what? First I knew bulldozers on the site. Too late. Had it all been agreed? Everybody said yes. Was it written into the WSI? Was the, was the, if it had been if it, this, I'm not, as I say, I'm not casting aspersions here. If the previous contractor had followed on to the next stage of archaeological work, perhaps that would have worked. But there was a dis disjoint. It was a different contractor. Now, I'm, as I say, I'm not signing blame here at all. It's just failings in the system because there is no system to create engagement um, and to create the engagement with the local museum. One great success is that the Roman villa is on a playing field because the development was moved around so that the public open space was over the site of the villa. So the villa is like sitting there nice and safely. But of course the local residents don't know that that's what they're looking out on. Huge, huge opportunity missed. There they are, looking out over the site of the Roman villa. They have no idea. Now, Moving on slightly, we did a project um, looking at archaeological archives and the way that um, <laughs> there's no funding for museums to look after archaeological archives, and there should be, and getting that built again into the planning system. And on the recommendations, the project is called Seeing the Light of Day, just Google it, Seeing the Light of Day Archaeology, um, and the report which has been taken up by Historic England mm -hmm. working to look at the um, implement with the Arts Council England about the implementation of the Mendoza Review into the future of museums. So there's work going on there at the moment. Recommendation eight was ensure that opportunities to engage communities and accessing archaeological archives are maximised. And that includes building museums in right at the start. Because it's too late when the site's been dug, written up, finds get dumped to the museum, ten years later it might find its way into a display. That's rubbish. Huge opportunities missed. <laughs> Museums aren't only the archives. Now you can hear you'll be able to sit here from Pierre Boyle there's a session tomorrow morning uh, about the engagement with public with uh, archaeological archives, which is a great thing to do, but we need museums to be at the beginning. Because we have the infrastructure. We were already in contact with the schools. Um, the school that Dan mentioned that his children go to, we, our education officer regularly has been visited and run sessions there. We are already there on the ground doing these things and it gives us an opportunity to get things in place so that when people move into the houses, they are engaged with the, the story of their, and where they live and their local area. 
We've been doing community archaeology since 18, no, 1853. As an art, independent charity, that's what we've set up by people who are interested in archaeology, doing all sorts of community archaeological work since then. And we'll still be doing community archaeology in another 150 years. As archaeological contractors, as planning archaeologists, build your museums in from the start. We've got the infrastructure there ready to go. What we're short of is cash, but that's what the developers have 